Hey guys, welcome to my Affinity Designer web development tutorial. Uh, it's a quick tip today. I'm gonna show you how to do these curved shadows, which are really trendy in uh, web design. However, uh, this tutorial is really quick and you know, you'll probably, you can probably adapt this to uh, other things too. So basically, you've probably seen this before on a lot of websites. Um, if you were to make a normal, let, let's just actually get started here. Uh, I have everything kind of in its own layer. Actually, I can just kind of close that. Uh, let's, let's choose the square tool here and go ahead and make a new square. Let's, uh, lighten that up a little bit. Let's go here. So the way you would apply a normal drop shadow is by going to having the layer selected or even more specifically the rectangle, uh, the object hitting the effects layer and, uh, the drop shadow is actually called outer shadow, uh, here. So basically you want to do the offset and then you can blur it out and the intensity, and then, you know, you can play with the angle. So that's nice and that's, you know, standard, but you've probably seen a couple websites where they do this curve thing. So the way you do that is really simple. Uh, we're gonna close this out. All you wanna do is duplicate your layer. Uh, you can either hit Command J, that'll duplicate it, or edit duplicate. And now we wanna go to the bottom layer. We wanna click the color here, make it black. And then we wanna go back to the effects and this time we want to do Gaussian blur to it. And you just want to pump it up so you can kind of start seeing it coming around from the corners. Now, let me hide this layer. And when you use this, the, the black pointer selects objects. The white pointer is what you would normally use to select points. However, before we can do that, we need to click up here, which is going to convert the shape because we use the shape to curves. If you uh, drew this out with a pen tool, you wouldn't need to do that. It would already be curves, but we need to do that. Uh, so now what I want to do is uh, we can turn the magnet tool on here and uh, I want to click here and here. And then as I start moving it, it should kind of line me up a little bit better so I can get these points. There we go. So now we know the points are parallel. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I'm actually going to turn that off. Uh, but now we can kind of bend up. Uh, we can turn this layer back on. And we can drop this down. And uh, now we can actually start playing with it, uh, going back here and really kind of getting the curve we want. Uh, the point here, if we want to smooth this out a little bit, all we kind of do is go up here to uh, the point we want to convert it to and click on that. And then now that's going to give us the smooth handles to play with. Um, also, if you click on the edges here, oops, shift click on the edges, uh, you actually want to bring the shadow in a bit. You don't really want it to the edge on this specific type of shadow and we're going to bring it in there we're going to go back to the effects and we're just going to kind of play with the radius until we get something we like and i think that's cool and then what we're going to do to really uh hone this effect in is kind of go down with the opacity until it gets to something we like and then now that's how you do that pretty simple you know nothing to it that's why this is just a little quick tip um if you look here sometimes they'll do the curved shadows where it's like only curved at the one end and it's like just a really like drastic curve and uh, same thing it's the same process but you just want to uh you know make your your curve how you want it and same thing here we can click in and uh if i wanted to convert this to that that way now we got more of a uh, uh bevel to it and it's like a lot smoother so that's basically it let me show you this one real quick same thing uh create a sphere uh, duplicate it, drop it down. And then all I did was kind of bring the sides in to give it like just a little bit more of a uh, oval shape, but you know, same thing. So that's, that's pretty much it for how to do the shadows. Now I do want to show you one other thing because this is for web. And the point is you would make this and then export it and bring it into your web program. There is a couple issues with this. Sometimes you do want to just design in a big area and then chop it all up. Well, the, the crop tool isn't quite, it doesn't work. It, it's a vector crop. It's not like a full crop tool. So you can't really crop the image, your, your uh, document to where you want it to be. So when it comes to exporting these out, what we're going to do is go up here to the export persona. Okay. Now that we're in the export persona, there's only a limited amount of tools and I'm just going to, this is a quick tip. So I'm just going to go over this really quickly. I'll probably do another uh, uh, bigger tutorial on this, but basically we're just going to kind of make slices here over what we want. And you can drag them out 
and do that. Or if it's the circle here, see how it's on its own layer and everything, we can select that layer and just hit create slice. And what that's going to do is uh, knows where it is. Like here, there's still a fall off of a little bit of pixels, but it's going to crop it in. And, uh, you know, you can do this like super quick and super easy. So basically now that we have everything selected, um, you don't, if you go up here and go to export, it's not going to work right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to quite work right. So the way to export from this is uh, what we want to do is now we're on the layers here. We want to go to slices. And once we switch over to slices, um, where it was make slice, now it turns into export slice. So first of all, there's one thing you want to note that uh, the background is a slice. So we don't, I don't know, that's kind of weird that they do that. Uh, but we want to uncheck that. Now you can see that there's export three slices. So one other thing, once you hit this export slices, it's going to come up with the, the, di the dialogue to where to save and everything. And uh, what you want to do before you do that, though, because this is something that was switching me up a little bit. If you're doing JPEG, that's fine. But you probably want to do PNGs and have the transparent background. Well, in other applications like Photoshop and a lot of these other ones, if there's not like a big background here that you made, then you're going to be fine and it's not a big deal. It's just going to like know that it's transparent background. In Affinity, though, we do have to go to um, our document. And it actually looks like we need to be in. OK, so you got to be in the uh, uh, the main persona first, the draw persona. Then you go to file and document setup. And uh, over here on our second Thing. We got the dimensions here, and then you go over to color. You want to click this transparent background and click OK. And uh, oh, I actually had like a little square background there. So now we get the transparent background. And now when we go into the draw persona, or I'm sorry, the export persona, uh, we're going to have that background. So now when we hit export slices, um, and also just really quick, if you toggle down here, uh, you can choose if you want a couple of them to be uh, JPEG versus PNG or whatever. There, there's, there's actually, for as simple as this is, there's actually a lot of depth to the export persona, which is why I'm going to do like a different video on it. This is just a quick tip for this. And, uh, we're pretty much at the end right now. And I think I got you guys pretty much where you want to be. The only thing that I would say real quick, I'm going to show you is if, because this is a web design tutorial, you probably wouldn't actually want this square here. You probably, I'm guessing, depending on your level of development, you're probably doing CSS and stuff, and uh, you would probably just want that. So you do have to kind of bounce back and forth, uh, turning layers on and off to get what you want. But then when you bounce back, your slices are still going to be there and everything's going to be good. So that's how you do these curved shadows. And that's just a little bit of overview on how to get them out of Affinity and ready for your web design. So I hope you guys like this tutorial and uh, give me a subscribe because uh, if you do, I'm going to have more web stuff and I'm going to go over this in more depth. And uh, I just got a lot more tutorials on the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.